Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop, Feudal Endeavor by Andrew Zimdahl. It plays two to six players, it takes about 25 to 60 minutes to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. And in the game Feudal Endeavor, you're basically trying to manage a fiefdom. You're looking to vie for the Empress's favor and bidding on specific location cards to place on your player board. When you do that, you'll gain certain benefits, whether it be coins or specific people to serve you, like knights, or you're going to provide yourself uh, from not having to suffer negative victory points at the end of the game. You'll also be attempting to gather the Empress's favor by securing certain cards, moving up your position on the specific track, as well as, of course, gaining victory points as the game goes through and at the end of the game if you've done a good enough job by manipulating your tableau you're going to score even more victory points thusly ensuring your success by being the person who has the most points at the end of the game and that's pretty much the idea of the game bidding and tableau management let's go ahead and take a look down below i'll show you what comes in the game i'll give you an idea of how a round or two goes and then we'll talk about what i think and and what dante thinks this is Feudal Endeavor, and we've set it up for three players, except for the player boards, because they're too big. So I just set up one player board to show you the setup for the game. If you understand one player board, you'll understand them all, though. And of course, giving the board, and I have these screens out. So let's go and discuss everything. First things first is there are six different players, which means there are six different colors in the game. Black, green, red, yellow, white, and then we have blue over here to represent one of the players in the game. You're going to be getting these larger little cubes here which are going to represent the uh, palace construction tithes these are worth five a piece and these little ones here are worth one a piece and you'll be basically building onto the palace if you cannot uh, gain the empress's favor or empress favor cards here there are also these little tokens here these are basically worth two coins there are these singular points and then you have your little markers which is going to be used for turn order as well as being used for tiebreakers and then over here you're going to start with five victory points to begin the game just go ahead and place every single player's little token here representing their five starting victory points these are the three different uh, currencies in the game that are not just the coins you're going to have the brown you're going to have the, the brown the gray and the purple here which represents knights and uh, I think servants is what they're called. Knights, serfs, and horses. Serfs are going to be the grays, and horses are going to be the browns. These are the special ability cards. There's three different types. You'll shuffle these up and deal out two in a three or more player game. Uh, however, if you're playing with just two players, you're simply going to deal out one. And on the board, it tells you three plus, four plus, five plus, which dictates how many players are needed for a card to start there. And because we have a three-player game, we're starting with the first player, who is the last player to visit a castle or build a castle or in some way interact with a castle. And then it'll go clockwise from there, which will allow you to put red here and then green here. If you are last on the order for the beginning of the game, you'll gain bonus coins. So the green player get one bonus coin in addition to everything else he's going to get. And then, of course, it would just in increase in value as you go down this track here. Also, additionally, you have these cards here. These are the land deed cards. You're going to place out in a three-player game five of them from this deck here. And in a three-player game, you're going to take out the cards from the land de deed deck that say plus four and plus five. That will simply mean that you're not playing with four, five, or even six players. And so you're going to have a smaller deck for a lower count, which will make the game speed along a little quicker. And, of course, the four, five, and six spots are used, but they are not... Uh, started with you don't start with these cards here to place them there uh then also you're going to be placing these uh empress's bidding tiles down or cards down on the spaces here in a two-player game you'll put three and a four you'll uh, in a three-player game you'll put four and then of course more and more as you play with more players everybody's going to get their own individual player board and all the player boards are slightly different but function in the same way there's the bidding aspect on the front portion the top front portion of the board and then down at the bottom is is your tableau it's where you're going to have your fiefdom it's where you're going to be placing down these cards here which are going to represent different locations whether it be a statue granary or an outpost and then you're also going to get all of your building tokens here these are the little building things i talked to you about previously the big and small ones they're set off to the side and then you're going to start off with three coins and it's going to be a two and a one or three ones if you'd like uh, you're additionally also going to start with these two starting 
uh, cards here, which you're going to have the same for every single player. I've got a pasture, and this one's called a hovel. And then you're going to place them down on the board in any way that you'd like. When you place these cards down on your board, you're going to cover up spots. Covering up these spots here will cover up negative victory points you might get at the end of the game, and covering up this purple space here is going to net you one bonus token, which is a knight here. So now with your three coins, you're also going to get a knight, and knights are actually currency. In fact, these three different types represent currency. The horses are going to represent three, the little serfs represent two, and the knights will represent five. So they have some high value to them if you can gather them in certain ways. And that's pretty much the entire setup for the game, other than every single player will also get one of these turn order screens that will allow you to cover your board at certain instances in the game. Uh, and it's during the auction phase, you're going to be covering this board up and placing down your tokens and whatnot to I attempt to gather these cards here and the special cards over here from your opponents so you can place them down on your board because you are, in general, just trying to increase your serfdom, trying to gather victory points, and cover the spaces that give you negative points throughout the game. That's the setup for the entire game. Let's go ahead and take it down below. I'll show you how a round or so works, and then we'll come up and discuss the game. Okay, so let's discuss the game Feudal Endeavor, but we're only going to just use one player board. However, this is set up for three players, so you would be playing with two other players in this specific instance. The beginning beginning of the game, which we're just going to go ahead and say is blue here because he is at the top and he didn't get any bonus coins, he is going to start off, and a lot of these phases take place simultaneously. This one here says the bidding and land management phase of the game. You'll bid on new land deed and special abilities, allocate resources to existing land deeds, uh, as well as you can do resource trades. You may trade any three resources for any one other resource in the game. So, to begin the game, you're simply going to take one of the player screens, which I set off to the side, and you're going to place it right here. After you've placed this right here, you're then going to allocate any of your funds or, or your resources or your little like, serfs and knights and whatnot onto the top area here or into these areas here. So, let's go ahead and pretend like this is hidden now. So, 1, 2, 3, and 4 is going to uh, be the same as 1, 2, 3, and 4. You have A and B, A and B, and then you have 5, 6, 7, 8, 5, 6, 7, and 8. If you want this card, you will place currency on this space. If you want this card, you'll place currency on this space. These you're going to be bidding and auctioning for because whoever has the most is going to be able to get that specific location. Uh, however, if you place currency on these spaces, which require certain things, these will just simply give you those items. So for instance, if you wanted to get a surf, you could put two coins on here during the uh, auction phase or the bidding, sorry, the bidding phase of the game, in which case you place two and then when the bidding phase ends and triggers, you're going to score this little guy here. And if you wanted a horse, you would spend three of them and that would translate into a horse. And why do you want these guys? Well, specifically because certain cards are only going to let you bid certain things in order to get them. And that's going to be based on the upper left-hand corner of the card. So if you wanted to gather a quarry, you could only bid coins in this specific area, as well as bidding surf. So if I wanted this number one, number four here, I, I could spend three here. However, I couldn't use this knight because it's the purple. But if I did happen to have this gray, I could. And this is, of course, worth two. Remember, two two, three, and five when it comes to the specific characters you'll be using in the game to try and gather these locations up. So people are going to go ahead and choose these locations. If you got two and you want to switch it out, you can switch it out to have these little ones here. And okay, well, let's say I want this blue one here. And let's say that's all I want to bid on. I don't want to bid on anything else. I want to keep everything else here. Everybody else would also do that step in the game. And then you would move on to the next phase, which is the income phase. In the income phase, everybody is going to acquire six currency, which are basically these coins here. And you're going to go ahead and put them into your little pool of resources there. After that, you're going to go on to the auction phase, which will determine the highest bid on new land deeds and special abilities, and winners will place these deeds onto their player board. And if there's a tie, the person who is in the highest favor with the Empress will win that specific card or location, and then move down the track based on the person they tied. So if, for instance, if a blue, uh, so let's say a green tied uh, with blue, blue is going to win that, and then these will be pushed up, and blue will go down to the bottom just like that. 
And special abilities will resolve immediately, so whenever you gather these, these will not go on your board, these will be set aside. Things like this one here is going to let you reallocate these spaces on the board, three of them. And this one here, this Warband, is going to give you two knights if you acquire this specific uh, card here. So basically everybody's going to go, okay, one, did anybody bid on it? And somebody will go, yeah, I bid one. So, okay, well, you get this one, you can place it on your board somewhere. How about two? Oh, I bid one. Anybody else bid one? No, nobody else bid one. Okay, great, you get the outpost, and you can place it on your board. Oh, I'll place it right here, which is also going to net me two coins. How excellent is that? And so on and so on and so on. If there's things that are left on the board, let's just say that this is exactly how the board was left, then that is going to trigger the end of the auction phase. No one gathered these special abilities, and no one wanted the granary, gatehouse, or quarry. So you move on to fulfilling the Empress's bidding. And basically how that works is in favor rank order, you're going to claim one Empress's bidding, and if you can't or don't want to do that, you can simply put one of your building cubes on the palace construction area. The reason why you'd like to do that is because whoever has the most of their little tile construction tokens on the space is going to get seven points at the end of the game, second most will get three, third most will get one, and anybody else is not going to get anything at all. But if you can acquire these, you probably should. So for instance, if I wanted this one here, and I'm playing as this player, I have to have a white uh, sorry, a yellow and a red uh, diagonal to each other, which I do have. I also would have to spend a purple, which is a knight, and I'd have to put it into the supply. That would net me two victory points as blue, uh, one, two. And it's also going to push me ahead on the queen's favor, which is pretty nice, as well as giving me one cube on the palace bidding tile area. And then this can be set aside for you for later. After everybody has chosen to either gather these or one of this, then you're going to move on to the next phase. And remember, you can only get one Empress's bidding per round or place one of these on here. This is the next part, which is going to be the restock part of the game. And depending on the number of players is how many tiles you're going to need to restock. So in this case, we're playing a three-player game. That means there's one, two, three, four, five to begin with, which means five more come out during this phase. So we're going to push one, two, three along with these ones here, one, two, and three, and then four and five. And these are gonna fall off, and then uh, you're gonna put more of them on. Oh, actually, I kinda, I kinda goofed that up. Let me see. Should be something like, should be something like this. Yeah, there we go. Because this is gonna push this way. So I can I can show again, make sure I'm doing this, I'm doing this kinda right here. This, these, these will sit like this, you're gonna put one from the top of the deck, one more from the top of the deck, and then they will start pushing. And so on and so forth. You see how it's working here? And finally, the last one's going to go across. And there we go. That would be a full board. And if the next time came out and it was like this, five would be pushed off and five would come on. Additionally, you're going to be putting down one on the Empress's bidding or filling in all the ones that have been taken. However, if none had been chosen, the far right one would fall off and these will all be pushed to the side and a new one of these is going to come out. And then after that, you're going to go back to the bidding and land management phase, covering up this location here, bidding and placing them on these areas here up until the end of the game. And when the end of the game triggers, you're going to determine who has the most victory points by looking at this track by getting any victory points from your board here or losing any victory points. Uh, looking at these cards here, some of them do certain things, like for each one of these cards you have on your board, you can net one, three, five, or seven, depending on the number. For each blue around the specific card, they'll get you one point or yellow or red. These will let you place on here, which will net you victory points at the end of the game as well. And sometimes you'll get victory points for just simply having these white cards set aside next to your board. Regardless though, whoever has the most victory points at the end of the game of Feudal Endeavor is the winner of the game. So let's come up and discuss it and uh, maybe some caveats if I messed up. Okay, okay. So I do have caveats, but not too many. A, during the income phase, you know, when you place your currency on your board, which has these certain cards, that is when you'll gather the, these values. So if you spent three coins for this horse, you'll get the horse on your income phase. Uh, secondly, the special cards, these little white ones here, they're called special ability cards. If no one buys them, they'll fall off into a separate discard pile. You'll put new, two new out onto the board. And then when that specific pile or deck runs out, you'll shuffle all the discard and make a new deck and new, more special abilities will come out. However, that's not the same for the land deck. That's the land deck. Once that runs out, that is the end of the game. The other way that the game will trigger an ending is if you fill up your entire board. And if somebody fills up their entire board, the end of that round will trigger the end of 
of the game and victory points will be allocated based on what your board looks like how many victory points you already have and then of course the palace area if you have the most little blocks on there that will score you the most points another small caveat i guess is that the little blocks that you start with there's four of them when you get to the fifth one you'll take the big block you have and put it on the board and take your other four off because that represents five so you have about 19 different blocks you can place on the board which is more than enough for any player game or any play player count game that you're gonna have to worry about but that's pretty much all the caveats i got for the game feudal endeavor is basically a tableau management game with a bit of a bidding aspect to it as well you're placing down certain types of currency on certain cards to be able to place those cards onto your board to gain victory points at the end of the game and if nothing else you'll gain currency from placing those cards down or stop yourself from losing victory points because at the end of the game you'll score negatively if specific little uh spaces are not met so those negative numbers there if those spaces aren't covered at the end of the game you're going to lose points for those specific areas which are ooh, pretty dangerous right so you don't want that to happen the game plays six players which is more than enough players for the game i've played this at two three and four and it has been fun throughout all those different player counts and very enjoyable i like bidding games i like tableau management games and it does a good job of both However, you have to be prepared for ties, because during ties, that's what the Empress's favor is really going to come into account. That's going to determine if you get that specific card or not. So spending more is going to be beneficial, but spending too much is dangerous, because at the beginning of the game, you only have so much currency to deliver, and you'll need that currency for placing down on your board specifically and gathering new cards. You want to try and specifically choose cards that are going to help you out throughout the game. If, for instance, you have a card that says, oh, I'm going to get one victory point for every blue card around this one, you're going to want to try and stock up on those blue cards. But that significantly reduces the amount of uh, other victory points you can gain. Maybe you want this specific one here, one, three, five, and seven points by gathering these four different cards. Well, then that's going to be harder for you to achieve, but not impossible. I think you get an extra three of them if you manage to get all the victory points from that specific card there. These special cards are really good too. They provide a heavy bonus or benefit by giving you knights, by letting you rearrange your board, but they're highly sought after and it's going to be a challenge to gather them. So playing smart can sometimes be better than playing to gather the best specific things at the cost of almost all of your resources. The Queen's Favor is unique as well in the fact that you have to basically place your board down to gather these favor cards. And you might not want to place things in certain ways because you're not going to score as many points on your off of your board, but you will off of the Empress's favor cards. And so you'll have to kind of do this weighing aspect in the game. Do you want this or this? Sometimes you can have both, but not always. And in fact, most of the time you can't. Uh, the game has some elements of take that, I suppose. There's things, cards that you can steal uh, negative victory points from players, and you'll be able to take, the, of course, the bidding aspect where if somebody wants something, you want it as well. There's going to be that clash. Sometimes people are going to want the same Empress's favor card as you, and there's going to be a clash there as well. So you have to be prepared for a bit of a competitive game, whereas you're also, of course, building your own specific little feudal area uh, and, on the game. The theming works perfectly. You are feeling, you do feel like you're building onto your board placing down the cards which builds up your territory you want to have the favor of the empress you want to gain victory points from her so it all works very well it does promote the theme of i, don't know, I guess creating a feudal system while making sure that the uh, monarchs and matriarchs are not disappointed in you and making you suffer the consequences of choosing poorly uh, the artwork is solid. It does exactly what a game like this would need to do. It gives you all the different little symbols for everything you need to know about. Placing your card on two coins means you get two coins. Placing it on a negative victory point marker hides that, and thusly you don't lose negative points. And even the more complicated ones, I suppose, like let's say the Empress's Favor one, it will tell you X based on the cost, which is that's what you have to pay for, and then it'll say you get four victory points, and then there's a little castle, which lets you place one of your little cubes on the castle. It's very simple as to how they function. Uh, I guess the only complex one for me was these cards here. I thought originally if you had this and then you got three other green ones, that would get you seven points. But in fact, you actually have to have all four of these type of cards specifically of the blue, the red, and the yellow one. And if you can get all four of those, which is highly difficult and challenging, you can get seven points from that. The scoring system, the scoring, the point system is probably going to be mid to low, so it goes up to 40 points. And if you can get a solid 20 to 25, you're doing pretty well in the game. 
I really enjoyed this game. I think people who enjoy the type of elements I've described will enjoy this game as well. As long as you're prepared for a, com a more competitive variant, the game's not overly complex, but it's not overly simple either. There's a lot of choices you're going to need to make in the game, choosing between getting certain cards and foregoing other cards, using special abilities, and allowing your opponents to do that instead. You are more so focusing on your own board than other players, but at some points you can choose to kind of mess with players if you want, and that'll be just basically up to you and your playstyle. Overall Feudal Endeavor, solid little game, I really enjoyed myself, and I think you will too. Down below, link in Kickstarter. You enjoyed too, right? Yes, yes he did. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Right there. Say right there. Like, subscribe, and comment. As well as checking out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. As well as our weekly live stream, 6.30 p.m. on Wednesdays. PST. We do that on Facebook and you can join the crowd and try and win some games live online with us. It's a lot of fun and we like to interact with you guys. And sometimes if you do the Patreon thing, we do a Thursday stream here on YouTube, but you can sometimes catch us if you're lucky as well, just by watching us and seeing what we do, what we come up with. Uh, also go and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, these guys over here. I think you guys can enjoy them. They do a lot of fun stuff, even more stuff than my own site. All right, guys, thank you for watching some feudal endeavor with me. If you're interested, check it out. Go down below and hit the link and, and, and pick up some surfs and some nights and whatnot. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And as always, we look forward to... Are you ready? Seeing you guys next time!